welcome to Lilac, the Breed and Bloom. This is a presentation kind of focusing on some of the characteristics of our national winners and as well as the kind of breed in general and some of the recent discussions about the lilac color. So pictured here is a, is a lovely doe, one of my favorites, and she's had a tremendous career. And so going forward, we'll talk a little bit about her her color and we'll look at some other medium colors. So competing on the national level is going to be kind of my starting emphasis and then we're going to morph a little bit as we kind of talk about some of the finer points of this breed. So for lilacs, the single biggest point category is body. However, as we go on, you're going to see that 45 points actually are considered together and we're going to talk about that. So color is 25 points for a breed named after its color. Uh, it's fairly significant. Fur being 20 points, one inch rollback dense. And soft is our adjective for this breed. So fur should be soft. And I'm gonna say soft a lot because as we talk about color, you're gonna see that heavy guard hair not only affects texture and the rate of return, it also affects color. So it is impossible in my first point here uh, to have uniform even color if the fur is poor quality. So by poor quality, I'm talking about rabbits that are molting, excessively harsh with a heavy guard hair, rabbits that are patchy with you know missing pieces of fur or thin fur or they're double coated. They're pushing a new coat, but they haven't yet kind of completely molted the old coat. When you see those animals, what you see in surface color is often blotchy, streaks of color, um, I have a good picture in here coming up. You see the actual um, kind of a transition line between the coat being pushed in on a junior and the old coat, the, the dead coat, lying really flat, lacking life, lacking luster, and it changes how the light and the pigment interact for color. So color and fur very, very much go hand in hand. And when considered together, they're nearly half the total points of this breed. And this is fairly imperative, this breed named after its color. And to show off this correct medium dove gray color, the body must display balance. And condition being 10 points is important for firm flesh, vitality, and the look of a champion. So the remainder of the points I consider icing. They're the head, three points, ears, three points, eyes, feet, and legs. Um, as long as I've been showing lilacs, um, we've had many nationals wins, convention wins. I have never yet her to judge based an animal based on head, ear, eye, legs. In this breed, it is not emphasized. It's not a point schedule, very high for a reason. Um, and that is because the emphasis of this breed truly is fur, color, and body. And so I want to kind of drive that home a little bit because I know um, people that show other head breeds, these, you know, very, very big deal. In this breed, it's, it's not one of our defining features. So there's my daughter and I last year um, winning nationals together. It is really special. I am so blessed. I love my kids and it's awesome to be able to show together and to breed together to go to a nationals level. We were very fortunate to do it back to back 2018, 2019. And we also won uh, together open and youth. Um, and I think it's a testament to uh, consistency in, in color breeding. And you're about to see that as well. So we have body number one because it is the single highest point category, but it is not what makes a lilac. And we're gonna talk about that a little more too. And this is, might be a little uh, point of contention and that, that's fun. I want you to think about the standard. I want you to wrestle with the language in the SOP and to really critically look at, if you're a lilac reader, look at your animals. Are, is what you're producing making our breed better, more competitive on the all breed best in show table and attractive to our breed? Or are you just producing more without each generation adding something of value to the breed. And I want to challenge you to think about that. Even if it irritates you, think about what you're putting out as a breeder and putting on the table in front of judges that because that represents our breed and judges. This is a rare breed. They don't often get to handle and evaluate our animals. And these animals are so good and we've had them so long in the United States. There is no reason why lilacs should not be a best in show contender at Arba national conventions. They have one, it's been a long time. Um, when you talk to judges and you say, oh, I wonder who the you know, nationals winning rabbits are gonna be at convention. 
they throw out a lot of reeds, it's never lilac. And so part of that is because of the impression that breeders are putting in judges' minds when you just put, you know, anything on the table, you just try to build numbers, whatever you're doing. I really want you to think about why we show, why we breed, and to kind of wrestle with that question a little bit. Lilacs must be compact, well-rounded, and balanced. This is all language from the SOP. If you haven't read it in a while, go read it before you do your next round of readings. The top line must rise gradually from the base of the ears to the center of the hips, and then curve gra gracefully to the base of the tail. The hind quarter is broad, smooth, and round from all directions. The shoulders are slightly narrower than hips, so they do have a taper. One is deep and wide as possible. The body firm and well filled. So the definition of balance, we talk about balance a lot and it's gonna keep coming up, especially in this breed. It is a shape or conformation. It's the orderly and pleasing arrangement of physical characteristics to present a harmonious appearance. So I have two examples of two lilacs here. Okay, one's good, one's like a C minus grade. What's the difference? Over here on the left, see that medium uniform color, evident pink tint. You also see a very good high point and balance. So when you look at the animal on the left, I want you to look at and consider the depth of shoulder. The depth of shoulder is from the base of the table all the way up to the base of the ear. What depth of shoulder does this animal have and how does that depth of shoulder compare to his depth of body? And where is that high point? Because that high point affects not only your depth of loin, but how quickly the loin tapers off over that hind quarter. Finally, the balance of this animal needs to be matched with a medium dove gray, beautiful uniform coat, one inch ideal length of fur, soft, soft, soft texture, and beautiful density, good vitality and gloss. And the animal on the left is just a fantastic, this was my nationals open winner as a baby. So this animal I knew already is gonna be a keeper. And these are the things that I'm looking for on the right. You have an animal, a young animal, these are both juniors, a little darker, but still within the, what we call the medium range for the breed, has pink tint, the high point is too far forward, and the shoulder is too low, so it's, it's off balance, depth to width. So as you look at the top line, you can see, distinctly see two different animals, and the balance, your eye should immediately start to question, like you feel like something's wrong, and then you start dissecting the structure, and you realize, where those type faults exist. And the other thing about this animal is, can you see the line of color difference along the neckline? So this is an animal transitioning coat. So the color, the ears, the nape of the neck, halfway through the, the top line, the saddle, very good lilac color. And then you see a distinct difference in the lower shoulder, the lower hip and thigh, evidence of a transitioning coat. Do the uniformity, uniformity in length, color. You don't see the uniformity in the gloss and the, the condition of fur on that second animal. And I'm hoping as you look at these closely, you'll see that the huge difference between what we're looking for in terms of balance, coat, color, finish, and structure, type. The other point uh, for color and fur is to consider them why I consider them as a grouped point value. So we talked uh, with the first the second slide a little bit about how good that fur. So rabbits that are in molt, they're not in prime condition. Rabbits that are double coated, it absolutely affects your surface color. And I'm going to prove that. And hopefully if you're a breeder, you already have seen that in your herd. The fur has to be soft to the touch, roll back with even density and a moderate rate of return. One inch is ideal. So these three animals, um, oh, okay, the bullet point I have here I thought was a really good judging technique, and this actually changed how I judge lilacs. At the Indy Convention, all the class winners, your junior buck, junior doe, senior buck, senior doe, 
they were placed in the holding coops in the middle of the convention floor because the lighting was like directly overhead. It was very bright at that, that uh, location. It was better than the small judging coops. So all the class winners were placed there in the holding coops and the judge stood back and just kind of watched these rabbits move about in these, in these holding coops, noting, looking for evenness of fur. He was looking for uniform color. He was looking for that medium dove gray, pink tint, prime coated animal to represent our breed on the best in show table and to also be crowned as the best of breed for the convention. Um, and that was his reason for picking my doe that day over all the other outstanding exhibits was putting the proper emphasis where it needs to be because at that level of competition, convention, nationals, the quality of rabbits is very good, very competitive. Our type was very, very consistent down the classes. So that wasn't really um, a tiebreaker necessarily. So what it came down to is the lilac rabbit that represented color and fur for the breed. And I thought that's exactly the right emphasis. So I was judging a specialty in Oregon. Uh, it must've been last fall. So the rabbit, the picture on the left is three rabbits and I wanted to pose them up at the very end. This is after I've made my breed selections, you know, didn't know who the owners were, et cetera. But after I made my selection for best of breed and best opposite, I said, I really had a close contact between the three. There was one junior buck that just wasn't going to be in the top um, for a variety of factors. But these three in particular were quite good. My senior buck, junior, uh, junior doe, senior doe. And they were all slightly different in surface color. And that's what launched a wonderful discussion about what was medium correct color and why does that separate your top animals from the animals that are just otherwise very competitive in type or very competitive in maybe density. I noticed in this particular picture, again you can't feel the coats and I realized that, that the, the rabbit that was a little darker than ideal was my buck, he was my senior buck, and he had a little heavier guard hair. So he, I put him in the middle to try and differentiate between my senior doe. Look at that beautiful prime line on that doe. I mean, that just stands out a million miles away. Even a non-judge, you should be able to spot that from a distance. Um, the uniformity in color on all three of these were fantastic. The uniformity is very important, and that's the next slide, so I won't go off on a tangent yet. But the heavier guard hair already, before I touched that animal, I already knew that I was going to have probably a little different texture than soft and correctly so. He wasn't, um, he was not soft in texture. He was a little bit uh, heavier in that guard here, a little faster in the return, so a little thinner. And it definitely affected how that lilac hue was re reflected off of his coat. So, um, and then again, the two does, one doe with just fantastic uniformity, structure to that fur, density, evenness of, of fur and texture. And the and the junior just very, very close right there. Very, compar very competitive in, in type. All three of these rabbits were, were quite good. The molt line on the right hand side, the right rabbit photo, it definitely changes the color, texture, and uniformity of the fur. So you can kind of see it's, it's really cute that right along kind of at the base of the ear, you pick up that line and it follows all the way through his midsection, through that thigh, that lower hind quarter. You can see two coats. Not only are they different in texture, they're different in color. And that is a big detraction for uniformity. So similar to, um, I saw a presentation on Silver Martins by Tex, Th Tex Thomas. It was in our domestic rabbits. And I like his quote. He basically said, if you pick an animal to represent the breed for best of breed that day that does not have prime coat or correct color with a glossy finish, then you've either just screwed up or you've had nothing else to choose from. And that's because the Silver Martin, like the Lilac, has this many points between fur and color. Almost half their grade is on fur and color. And that's how much it, it, is in, it matters in selecting your top winners for this breed. So this rabbit on the lower right is just an example of a young animal I was growing out that you can definitely see. He's got quality of fur coming in, but I would not show him simply because of the great difference that you're going to feel not only in length and density and texture, but how uneven he is in color. And I would, I would fault that considerably for, for class competitor. So uniform, 
Medium dub gray, 25 points. What is medium? So we've talked about this uh, quite a bit at the national club level. Medium is a range of color. It's not a specific swatch. One of the recommendations that we've had and kind of kicked around years past was creating a swatch to uh, demonstrate to judges what the national club defines and votes and approves as medium. One of our concerns is that we didn't want paper matching. We didn't want to put a swatch in the standard that judges would open up to and then take it next to a lilac and try to pick the lilac that matched the paper. Um, there's a variety of reasons why that's just not the ideal for judging. One of them, and the most important is, look at this picture on the bottom of the screen. Here we have a demonstration, we've got seven rabbits. Four of these rabbits are acceptable medium dove gray color. They're all granted, well, not the lilac rex otter, it's not a recognized color. The three in the middle of the four, um, they've had a successful show career, very good representatives of the breed, but look how different they are in hue, intensity of color, um, the overall lilac, light or dark, tint is it can be quite different and it's because of that that we didn't really want to have a swatch represent our breed as a whole it's not a breed to judge on the paper it's a breed to feel for texture and density it's a breed to identify that pink tint and look for a medium a medium color that would be within a range of acceptable hues so just like there are many colors of tort Different modifiers can um, accentuate and make a color more vibrant, make a color appear lighter. It still may in fact be within an acceptable range of what would be considered medium. So knowing that, um, I think it's important to look here at this photo and see what's not acceptable as medium. So the animal on the far right, this is an import. Imports are known for having a very light, very delicate, uh, almost like a, excessively light in our standard washed out gray color. So they are an extremely light lilac and in the US standard that's excessively light. It's very very light and when you look at it next to these more medium rabbits it's very evident that it's too light. And then on the far left I have an example of a very dark, two very dark lilacs. Um, they can be so dark gray that they can start to appear blue in color. And that's very incorrect also. So our standard specifically um, calls that out as, a, as a, a detraction from what the overall goal for this color of this breed should be. And so this is kind of a good photo that just shows a graduation in hue and how medium can really mean more than one thing. And the swatch idea, it, it wouldn't really serve the breed simply because whoever voted on the swatch in 2019, 2020, may not still be in agreement that that was the best swatch that should represent the breed in 2021. Maybe now we think that it should be just a hair lighter because the breed tends to get darker. Or maybe we think it should be a hair darker because the breed was getting too light. So um, we, we dismiss that idea relatively quickly. But I also wanna emphasize that the SOP, it calls for a uniform color. So when the color is described in our standard, it's a uniform medium dove gray. It's not just a medium dove gray, it's a uniform medium dove gray. And that word matters. Words matter in your standard. Um, adjectives matter as a judge, as an exhibitor. If you want to breed the animal that best exemplifies its standard of perfection, you need to know what the adjectives are that the National Club used when they presented this breed for standard approval. And soft fur is extremely important. And so many people overlook that. And that really is a characteristic of our breed. The second thing is uniformity. Uniform is part of the color description because the lilac color carries 25% of its grade. That's why uniform is there. We want that color to be the same. The color should not be different on the head, the ears, the extremities of the animal or the belly. We also want the color to carry all the way down the hair shaft as close to the skin as possible. So as you're thinking about your nationals plans, as you're thinking about the animal that's going to exemplify balance, you must have uniformity as part of that word because that has what ma has made the difference in, our, in my lilac competitiveness is having extreme uniformity of color. My mediums have ranged 
from maybe the third rabbit over to the second rabbit over in that photo, my color might kind of, you know, go back and forth between those two. But what doesn't change is the texture, the uniformity, and the fact that it's consistent across. And rust is often seen in our breed. And that is the reddish brown coloration of fur on the sides, flanks, or the feet of rabbits. And it can be caused by overexposure to sun, um, dirty hutches. It can be caused also by, you know, urine staining. Sometimes the bucks are notorious for being sprayers or, and, or um, you know, pushing up against the side of the walls or the dividers where their does might be. Um, and that really uh, affects not only color and uniformity, but it affects texture of the fur. So there again, we're dealing with 45 points between your fur, your texture. Um, it can affect rate of return. It can also, it definitely throws off the uniformity of color. So it's, it's pretty important for this breed. Good color begets good color. Uh, you get what you cull for. And I think sometimes people put the word breed in there and that that's not quite right. You don't get what you breed for. You get what you remove out of your herd because what's left are the animals that are going to be pr producing your next generation. So if you have animals that are notoriously rust tinged, and it could be maybe because their fur structure is a little bit thinner so that urine penetrates better. It could be that they're just, you've got a line that's just very sensitive, overly sensitive maybe to some of the sun damage. Think about if that is improving with each generation or think about if you're continually losing and you're hearing comments from judges saying lack some uniformity of color or some rust areas being faulted on color. Um, and remember that outcrossing usually darkens color. So we have some, uh, you know, historically we have some ruse have popped up in lilac litters. Uh, over the years, people have sometimes put in Florida whites. I've heard uh, New Zealand and Rex have been brought in. Um, and usually the first couple of generations, your first structure, your return is, is incorrect. It takes a while to get that uh, two or three generations to get it back to a one inch rollback. But also you'll notice that your first generation tends to be darker. And this particular coat feature of our breed, it tends to darken if we don't vigilantly guard against that and maintain this beautiful medium dove pink gray with that, that tint, that dove pink tint. Um, on the right hand photo there is, those were juniors that I showed at Indy. And all of those juniors are from three different litters and the uniformity and consistency of color is what you get when you guard against producing and, and breeding in animals that maybe you like for a variety of reasons, but maybe they are just not great lilac representatives of the breed. And so I want to just kind of challenge breeders to remember that we do get what we call for and what you're putting on the table in front of judges it influences what their impression is of our breed. So I want to showcase the very best, the very most outstanding animals so that we can not only attract new exhibitors because they're going to see these animals being competitive with all the other breeds, but that judges might look forward to judging them. They want to see quality. They want to have their hands on quality. Um, so something, just a few points to think about, keep in mind. The photo on the far left is that what depth of color looks like. So as you look at your lilacs, I have seen some, um, some crossbred animals that they're almost tipped. And I don't know what's causing that. I don't know what genetics are behind that. But as you open the hair to, to, to evaluate and assess how far down the hair color travels down the shaft, if you're seeing two different colors, so the tip can be light or it can be dark. And if you're seeing that you're seeing a lot of skin or that base undercolor is starting to look white or starting to look less pigmented, then I would very much encourage you to really pull back on your breeding program and start looking at those brood animals and trying to assess where these issues are arising because uniform color is part of our standard. It's not just a medium dove gray. Go have another look. It's a uniform medium dove gray. Words matter. The photo in the middle towards the bottom, another example of just a wide variety of lilac color. So the rabbit on the left is a mini Rex. Rex coats um, are often very dense. They have obviously totally different fur structure and that is a good lilac mini Rex, but compared to the actual breed of lilac, it's darker. It has just a more dense, uh, you know, Rex coated appearance. 
but the lilac, the breed, is truly a delicate medium dev gray with that pink tint. And when you get too dark, you for sure lose that pink tint and that, that delicate medium balance that makes this breed so beautiful. And it makes them really stand out among other breeds. Um, another, just proving my point about color begets good color. The same rabbits that were National Open Youth for 2018 and 2019 and 2019 uh, Convention BOBs Open and Youth, these are all from the same sire dam lines, cooling heavy for fur and color. So the same genetics that come down through each generation, there might be one or two in the litter that, that really shouldn't move on. And like that, that slide I showed a, a little while ago that had a, a junior with a high point too far forward, a little too dark and heavy in that coat color, not one that I would keep for breeding. Some other good points about that rabbit, but if you really want to put something on the table that's gonna stand out, catch the judge's eye, that's good, that they're gonna think, wow, that is a pretty lilac. It's delicate, but it's got soft texture, but it also has a good structure. That's the difference. That's gonna be your scale tipper. Having good structure alone is, is important, but in this particular breed, you've got to have that color because this is the only breed that has a color this unique. It is soft, it is delicate, it has pink. It is truly the best color of this variety of any breed. And most breed uh, breeders, when they're looking to improve their lilac color, they want a lilac rabbit. And I can say that um, with positivity, with the satin presentation for lilac, they use the lilac breed to bring in that color. Havana, Havana used a lilac. Um, here's a Havana on the left. This is actually one of Julie Spears' presentation animals. Um, I did give her one of my lilacs. And I had this buck as a perfect example. This buck, he did pass presentation. As you know, lilac Havanas are accepted. And this is a good example of Havana lilac. But look at him next to one of my best, multiple best in show lilacs still very different. The, the delicate medium quality of our lilac fur is just distinctly different even than a very good lilac Havana and it allows this breed its own area of distinction as well and so I, I love that. Two excellent colors of lilac, um, different breeds, slightly different descriptions and understandings of color. Havana is a very dense darker color of all varieties but they're both good lilacs. The picture in the middle, another opportunity to look at extremely light color. In our standard, lilac is a fault. It is not a DQ. And I did exhibit some uh, Europeans at the Massachusetts convention and the judge didn't really know what to do with that color. So she just decided to unworthy it, wasn't sure exactly what to do. Well, our standard doesn't give you that option. Our standard says extremely light fur is a fault. And there's a reason why the National Club wanted it that way. And it was because we desire a medium dove gray, a color that has a delicate dove pink tint. And we want that opportunity to have that range to bring in a color if we need to, to keep that color a true lilac variety. Nothing that's gonna be confused for blue, nothing that's gonna have tipped fur shafts, something that's not going to carry, you know, color all the way down to the skin. So it, it's not an option. If you see an extremely light animal, it's to be faulted. End of story. Look for uniformity early. So in the nest box, these four examples of kits right here, very good color. When these kits are first born, my experience, um, I've had hundreds of litters, this color doesn't really, um, it, it does change, obviously, but when I see an extremely dark kit, I already know that that's not going to be the color I'm breeding for. So I'm already kind of in my mind thinking those, those are going to move out. Those are going to go to Condor. They're going to maybe do pet, whatever I might have in mind. But I'm, I'm looking for this delicate medium dove gray from a very early age. And I have found my rabbits that carry the most consistency, all my nationals winners, um, convention winners, they have all been beautifully colored from a very young age. And I think that's an important indicator as a breeder to think about and notice in your own breeding records. The, the breed and bloom. So our logo finally got approved. We had a national club vote. This was back in Indiana. Was it Indiana? I think it was Indiana. And we finally have a logo. So that is on our website. It's on the National um, North American Lilac Rabbit Breeders page and the Facebook. 
And this is a cute little picture my daughter took. Lilacs are not everyone's cup of tea, but they are a wonderful breed with the best lilac color in the hobby. Convince me otherwise. Every COD for every lilac variety so far that's been presented has used this breed to try and develop it. And I think as breeders, we need to guard that. We need to breed specific for that. And in order to stand out at nationals and convention, bring that color, that coat that is one inch dense and soft on good type with a uniformity of medium dove gray with that beautiful delicate pink tint and it can't be overlooked. It's so pretty. It's so vibrant. Even non judges that maybe have never judged a lilac, a newer judge, it's stunning. And that's the difference, I think, between breeding for the breed and breeding to improve and match the SOP. So with that final point, may your nest boxes be warm.